so the city manager is the CEO of the city, so I run the day-to-day -day operations of city government. Uh, I appoint all of the um, department heads, um, am responsible for the managing of the budget uh, and the day-to-day -day operations of city government. I think a job like this is a daily dose of issues that come up, issues that um, people expect you to be on top of, whether it be a police issue or a fire issue or it be an economic development uh, issue. Um, there's always something that's challenging you, challenging your skill set and, and requiring you to figure something out and usually in a very short period of time and usually with a lot of people breathing down your neck, not only the press uh, but uh, the elected officials I work for who you know, are expecting results and want to know right away what you're going to do, how you're going to handle the situation. I was born here in the city of Worcester, actually at City Hospital, which no longer exists. It's now the um, uh, Family Health Center uh, over off on Queen Street. Uh, I grew up in the Webster Square area of Worcester. Uh, I went to Gates Lane Elementary School and St. John's High School. Uh, went to Suffolk University where I got an undergraduate degree in uh, government. And I went to Johns Hopkins University where I got my master's degree in uh, government. There was nobody in my family that was particularly politically active. Uh, my parents voted, that was about it. But I remember when I was in elementary school, I started uh, collecting political buttons. Um, and just as a kid, just kind of collecting them. And then as I started that, I kind of got more interested in who the people on the buttons were and what the slogans were and what they meant. And you know, it led me down to a road of being really fascinated with history and with politics. and. You know, I started getting a little bit more educated and involved and started working at a very young age on, on political campaigns and kind of attending public meetings and, and that kind of got me onto the path of a, a political and government career. I was a member of the Human Rights Commission uh, in the city of Worcester. The then city manager, Jeff Mulford, appointed me to uh, be uh, one of five human rights commissioners in the city. I was on the Human Rights Commission until I was elected to the Worcester School Committee. I was the youngest person elected in Worcester's history to a citywide position. Uh, I was 24 years old when I was elected to the School Committee. I served two terms on the School Committee. Uh, then I had an opportunity uh, to join President Bill Clinton's administration in Washington when he was coming into office in 1993 and I was the Chief of Staff to the Assistant Secretary of Education in Washington. I then had the opportunity to work for our new Congressman at that time, uh, Jim McGovern, uh, and I was his Chief of Staff on Capitol Hill for six years. I ran for the Massachusetts State Senate, um, and I was elected uh, to the second Worcester District, uh, representing uh, the city of Worcester and six communities uh, outside of Worcester. I was there when we passed the health care law, which was the uh, precursor to uh, the Affordable Care Act um, where we extended health coverage to nearly 100 percent of the people here in Massachusetts. I was there and very actively involved with the gay marriage debate uh, which was very contentious. We were the first state to have it and there was a big debate about whether we were going to keep it or not. And you go to work at the State House, it'd be 10,000 people protesting on both sides out in front. You knew you were on the forefront of a new civil rights uh, effort and I was proud to be one of the leaders of the uh, pro-gay uh, marriage uh, efforts. I had a chance to go to California uh, and be the head of the Children's Defense Fund uh, in the state of California. I did that for a couple of years and um, kind of missed being home uh, and decided to come back as the Director of Government and Community Relations at the College of the Holy Cross. Uh, really enjoying that, being on a college campus and still being involved in government and, and politics, but uh, I'll be representing the interests of Holy Cross College. And I was there minding my business when uh, I was asked to come and be the city manager of, of my hometown. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the last three plus years. In the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of uh, what I would call virtuous changes, changes where previously abandoned or underutilized buildings have been uh, either repurposed or uh, torn down and something 
you know, much more um, useful and vibrant have come in its place, whether it be in the core downtown area or across the city. Uh, and we're seeing home prices rise in the city. Uh, usually a home is somebody's biggest investment. It's their source of wealth. And so the fact that we're able to see people's home values rise, I think is a good thing, not only for the city's tax coffers, uh, but for our uh, residents in the city. We created a program called Recreation Worcester, um, where we have kids come to our city parks. They're in 10 parks during the summertime, and it's a free recreational program. It starts at 9 in the morning, goes till 5.30 in the evening. Um, we provide two free meals, free lunch and a free dinner. Uh, we hire high school and college age kids from the neighborhood to staff that, so we're providing summer jobs to some of our older youth. They get recreational opportunities. There's a curriculum that we're trying to stem the summer learning loss. Um, we're bringing in lots of speakers and activities that are fun for the kids. We've now extended that to an after school program uh, where we're helping kids between the hours of three and five which can be a really challenging time. Sometimes mom and dad aren't home yet and either the kids vegging in front of the TV or maybe even getting into trouble and we're providing a safe space with staffed programming that can provide homework help, a, a good meal uh, and some recreation time. The world is run by those who show up. So when you show up, you get a disproportionate say in what happens. That's not only in voting, but it's also just participating in the process. Almost any time there's going to be a public you know, expenditure of dollars, there's a hearing, there's a process to get your input. Emailing or attending office hours or attending public meetings, there's built in the opportunity for people to be heard. It's a matter of people taking advantage of those opportunities. I was on the school committee, it would be interesting. You'd have, uh, I'd be on a subcommittee that would be talking about changing the curriculum for 25,000 kids in the Worcester Public Schools. And you might have three or four people show up to that public meeting. Well, in essence, those three or four people got to speak for the 25,000 kids in the Worcester Public Schools and the 180,000 people who live in the city of Worcester. So you have a disproportionate amount of power when you show up, whether it be through your district city councilor or your state rep or state senator, they want to keep being responsive to you. That gives you a lot of power to say, hey, pay attention to this. So you can send us an email. Uh, you could also call my office, which is 508-799-1175. We have some customer service folks who will answer the phone. Any of those are good options for you to get information from us.